Welcome ladies, gentlemen, Steve Buscemi. Hey guys, so I haven't made a video in a while. I literally made a whole video near Christmas being like, oh, I'm coming back, like I'll make more videos, like it'll all be good. Um, and I just did not do that. Um, there are a lot of different reasons, but I don't want to just like hound you with excuses. I just want to film. So um, there's just a lot of reasons, but we won't get into them right now. Today, we're having another musical mukbang. It's a series I have on my channel where I get a bunch of food, um, basically have like my, I'm on my period cheat meal, put in front of a camera while explaining the plot of a musical. So today I wanna to discuss Oklahoma. My hair is like all over the place, but it's okay girl, just don't pay attention to that. And what I have to eat, I have a bunch of Taco Bell. I've actually never had these. They were rather difficult to open. They exploded everywhere, so. I don't know how I feel. I mean, I guess they taste good. I guess. I also did my makeup for you guys. Um, tried a cute little look. So yeah, let's get into it. So it's 1906 when this show takes place. And it takes place in the Oklahoma Territory. Um, because at this point, Oklahoma is not yet a state. Num, 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 num. There's a cowboy named Curly. He's looking around thinking, oh, what a beautiful day. Admiring the view. Thinking, wow, what a beautiful place I live in. And he decides to visit this girl, Lori Williams, farm. Now, uh, Lori, this girl Lori, has a farm with her aunt. Her name is Aunt Eller. It's giving like Wizard of Oz, like girl with her aunt and farm. My dog is simply crying outside the door. It's very sad. So Curly goes to this farm and he's talking to Aunt Eller, Lori's aunt. And Lori comes out, they tease each other, they have like a little like, you know, cute little flirty banter. And Curly invites Lori to the box social. Now, the box social is around this time, if you've ever seen like Little House on the Prairie vibes, their schools, their churches, their everything are like poorly done. So they are having a box social to raise money to make a schoolhouse. Now, how they are raising money, but how they um, are raising money is that the girls of the town, of the territory, are going to make little baskets of food that they prepared and they're going to auction it off to raise money to make the school, to build the school. After the auction, there's going to be a little dance. They start talking about the box social and Curly invites her and Lori is like, uh, you took too long because this, the box social is maybe the next day or, or something like that. Like, I guess she's offended that he put it off till now. And he kind of teases her. He's like, well, never mind. I wasn't going to take you anyways. It's kind of like, you know, when um, you dub a guy and a guy's like, well, you're ugly anyways. He doesn't say that, but he's like, oh, well, I, I, didn't, I didn't really want to go with you anyways. Mm. Chicken chalupas are the best thing on the Taco Bell menu, and I will stand by that. So then Curly like teases her, saying that he he got like all of these things, um, like prepared for the box social, saying he has like a good ride, like it's a it's a surrey, it's like a little carriage, and he has all these pretty horses to take the carriage, like he has all this stuff to take her in. And she's like, mm, maybe I'll consider it. And then he's like, actually, I'm kidding. I don't have any of that, but you should still go with me. <laughs> so she gets like a little mad and leaves. But Curly has actually gotten all those things for the dance. He was just kidding about being kidding. 
he has a big brain you know these two are just like horrendous of flirting but maybe they're not bad at flirting maybe we are maybe we're just not getting their ways of flirting and that's honestly on us so <clears throat> Next character introduced is this guy named Judd. He's a farm hand at Lori's farm. And he has like a bit of a crush on her. But his crush is a little bit... How do I put this? Creepy? Lori says that sometimes like... She swears she sees someone out of the corner of her eye out her window while she's changing her things like that but there's no like proof he's just a little but he asks her to the wax social and trying to be nice to him and also thinking hey maybe this will get curly little jealous she accepts that's the kind of logic I had growing up flirting with people is my goal was just like get them jealous like in Oklahoma you know but that's her thought process now we flash to the train station and there's this guy he comes in his name is Will Parker and apparently Will has been away for quite some time. He went to Kansas City. Wise words of Nicki Minaj. I'm from New York, so I'm cocky. I have no, like, want to go to Kansas. So he sings a whole song about it and stuff. He's like, Kansas City's crazy, man. He comes back and... He had a girlfriend before leaving and the dad said, the dad of the girlfriend, because at this time, you know, you got to think about the time period, the dad tells Will that Will and her can only get married if Will gives him $50. But he does a lot of stuff in Kansas City. He makes money. Why isn't this hot sauce opening? But he makes a lot of money and he makes the $50. Now, Aunt Ella is there to greet him when he comes back. Now, Will is a bit of an idiot because he raises the $50 <clears throat> and then spends it on stuff for his girlfriend, his ex-girlfriend. Well, we don't know if it's his ex because he has been in Kansas City for a while. But we're not fully sure. But he thinks now he can marry his girl, man. And he also got a, a present for her dad. Which is this little kaleidoscope called like the little wonder or something. So, so we cut back to Lori. Lori is with her, like, best friend, Ada Wanny. Ada Wanny is Will's girl. But she discloses to Lori when Lori's like, guess what, Will is coming back. That while Will has been away for, we don't know how long, maybe half a year. Who knows? Who knows? Who's, who's to say? So while he's been gone, she's been, like, chatting up this Persian peddler named Ali Hakim. So he just goes around and sells stuff. You know what a peddler is. It's like a salesman, you know, they're usually European, blah, 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 blah. So Ada Annie's like, I really like this peddler. And Lori's like, well, you just have to like think like, who do you like more? But Ada Annie's like, no, you don't understand. Like Ada Annie, when her and Lori were growing up, supposedly Ada Annie was like very skinny, very scrawny, kind of like an ugly duckling. No guys really paid attention to her. And then when she started, you know, getting that body yaddy yaddy by Megan the Stallion, all of a sudden guys started paying attention to her so now she simply doesn't know how to act if a guy says hello to me i'll bust it open for him and i don't know how to fix that anyways 
at Lori's farm they're having like a cute little pre box social thing they're having like a girl party where the girls like put their baskets together this girl named Gertie who has a stupid ass laugh <laughs> She's at like the pre box social picnic -y thing at Lori's house with Curly. That's tea. Everyone in the town kind of knows about Curly and Lori's will they, won't they? Except for them. So all the girls are like, oh my god, this is heartbreaking. Like, she's robbed you of your man. And Lori gets kind of annoyed by this because she's like, I don't know what you guys are talking about, but I don't like Curly. So. If you spread a lie like that, I will fucking come for you. She's like, I don't give a shit. But really, she does. Because Ali Hakim is very clearly just going with Edo Annie to have someone to hook up with while he's peddling around this territory. But Edo Annie really seems to believe that, like, I think she thinks that they're both, like, no, she'll marry me, but, like, Ali Hakim very clearly is like, I just wanted a little. So like, I don't know what you're talking about. But he takes her to this little picnic-y thing and Edo and his dad sees. And he's like, you can't just like, fuck my daughter, you have to marry her. And he's like, what? What is this? What are you doing? What? You know? And Ali Hakim's like... I did not sign up for all of this. So anyways, back to Curly and Lori, their whole situation. Curly, I heard through the grapevine. Curly says, I heard through the grapevine that you are going to the box social with your handyman, Judd. Is this true? And Curly's kind of like, I thought no matter the bickering we have, that you were going to go with me. And Lori, you know, Judd is a little intense. Well, she realizes her jealousy plan has worked. But she can't necessarily back out of going to the box social with Judd because she's like somewhat like, you know, you can never be too safe. Men are scary as hell. So she just like thinks like it's easier to just go with him. We have to change how we are so these rumors don't spread. But they actually do like each other. That's the gag of it all. So he goes to Judd's like little like huddy thing near the farm where he lives. And he basically like threatens Judd without threatening him. And this is actually a really good song. I think you guys should like actually listen to it but like watch it the scene because it's it's interesting but Curly's basically threatening him without threatening him because Curly's like oh like wouldn't it be sad if you died <laughs> and Judd's like what <laughs> like, you're just a handyman but like we would find people to come and they would never be able to know like what a what a kind man you are like what a nice guy how you really helped out Obviously, all of this is not true. Curly does not know Judd, but just like, you know what? You're right. I am a nice guy. And so Judd is like, uh, so they have like a, a weird like machismo man on man standoff where they each have guns and they just like shoot a wall. I don't even know, girl. And Judd kind of knows about Curly and Lori's like whatever. And so he, he has more vigor for his plan he's like she's obviously mine like she's mine if she's not mine she can be nobody else's like she's mine i'm gonna marry her she's gonna be my bride i'm gonna eat her skin he doesn't say the last part but you know what i mean so ali hakim is still like selling shit i hurt my hips oh ali hakim is still selling shit and he's like selling all this stuff to aunt eller and Lori, like he's trying to and then Lori is like he he mentions that he has like this weird little potion-y thing like a smelling salt that was used by the queens of Egypt 
to help them make a decision. So Lori's like, you know what? I'll buy it. So she buys it and she like goes by herself somewhere and she like smells it because she's she's just lost like is this like bickering but we kind of like each other like should i pursue this should i just break it off with judd because i literally am just going with him to be nice and to make curly jealous but if curly's already jealous then like what am i doing i rather just go with him and she also ends up like falling asleep wherever she is and then she has a dream which is through a dream ballet which is where um she's with curly and they're all happy they're gonna get married and then judd kills curly and then she's forced to marry judd so she wakes up and she's like Ugh! and then so she's like all right the elixir has told me i smelled it it's obvious like i should start my life with curly but it's already too late by the time she wakes up it's like time for um the box social and then act one is done finito oh they're at the box social there's some like rivalry going on because apparently at this time in the territory there's like a problem between the cowboys and the farmers i don't know what cowboys do and then the farmers are like married they have families they're hard working so they like argue over things like water rights or land rights or whatever the hell and they're turning this dance it's like a rap battle, but not really. And Eller, she's like, she shoots a gun into the air and everyone stops and she's like, this is a party. Lori and Judd get to the box social and Lori gets kind of upset because she sees at the box social Curly is there with, um, Girly? Gilly? Whatever the fuck. I don't care. Will, like, goes up to Ali Hakim because Ali Hakim is there and he's like, so I guess you have my girl now, like, must be nice. He explains to Ali Hakim how he was a dumbass and spent the $50 because he didn't know that, like, you had to actually physically give $50, not $50 worth of stuff. But mind you, Ali Hakim doesn't want to be married to Ado Annie. So upon hearing that that's the reason why he's getting her and Will isn't, he buys the stuff that Will bought for Ado Annie to make $50 even. He's buying Will's stuff and then Judd comes over and he sees the little kaleidoscope. Now it's a kaleidoscope, but it's like a kaleidoscope of like pictures of naked women. Judd knows that the, that particular kaleidoscope, I think it's opposite. It has a thing you can move in the front that takes out a blade like this direction. So let's say you're going like this. If someone moves it in the front, the blade goes and he knows that. So he buys it. Now, Ali Hakim, from selling stuff and being around the world, knows that that's what it does too. This sus-ass bitch buying this secret weapon. So then the auction starts, and all the girls are auctioning off their baskets. So Ado Annie auctions off her basket, and to prove his love, and also that he's a moron, will bet the money he has, the 50 that he just got back. So Ali Hakim's like, fuck. And so Ali Hakim bets on Ado Annie's basket, like, a couple dollars more. So, Lori's basket comes up. And then it starts to get creepy because Judd is like, I bet $10. So people keep betting, like, all funny, like, oh, I, I like the way she makes pie. I'll bet $5. He's like, I'm gonna bet $6. Judd keeps being a little fucking creep off to save his woman, defend her honor. He tries to, like, outbid Judd. And Judd is like, you know what? I have been working as a farm hand for years. Can I backtrack a little bit? It's Wednesday, but I took too long to say this. I talk really slow. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with me. But basically when Curly and Judd were fighting earlier, Judd let it slide that he knew something about a farm hand from another farm that was like famous because the farm hand and the daughter were hooking up. But then the parents disapproved and the farm hand like lit the whole farm on fire and killed everybody. So he says that to like be sus and to scare everyone back to the box social they're outbidding each other but judd is like i've been a farmhand all my life i'm going to bid every single penny every single saving that i've ever made from being a farmhand dead ass you guys this is a basket so he literally just starts like giving the auctioner his stuff his saddle his gun his horse how the fuck are you gonna be a cowboy without a saddle a horse or a gun curly outbids judd i think they think her the basket her vagina in it because why are they bidding all of that money 
I really have to work on how fast I talk because literally I talk like a sloth and I literally murder time in these videos just talking about like the same thing. But anyways, so Judd basically tries to lure Curly over with the kaleidoscope so that he can do the dagger thing, but the peddler stops it before it can happen because he knows what the kaleidoscope actually is, so it doesn't work. Will and Ada Wanny are like walking around like they're pretty happy because Will now has the $50 to be able to marry Ada Wanny. So they're chit chatting and Will like brings up, he's like, you know, ever since I've been back, you know, I heard through the grapevine, through the grapevine, through the grapevine, that you're like kind of for the street. <laughs> and she's like, who me? And so they get into a little thing because she's like, you expect me to believe that you were in Kansas every night like reading the Bible? Like you probably hooked up with girls while you were gone. And she's like, never. And these little braids are really annoying me. Cause like, what the fuck is that? And he's like, no, I didn't. So they start to argue because like they want to raise a family. But like the issue is she's slut. But you know, it, it kind of plays on double standards, which is crazy for the time that this musical came out because she's literally like, I'll just stay home and take care of the kids and clean everything. And you'll be out doing who knows what. And I don't know if you're cheating on me. So like, why am I? And she, you know, she's kind of got a point. She is a free bird. So Jen then confronts um, Lori because I feel like you don't really want to be here with me. Me, an empath, noticing that my date doesn't want to be there with me. And she's like, what? <laughs> but he starts getting like mad aggressive, kind of handsy. It kind of seems like he's gonna AS her. It's SA. What's AS? Adam Sandler. So he's just getting mad aggressive. He kind of like threatens her. So Lori gets like really taken aback and she's like, you know what? You're fired. Like, I don't want you anywhere near me or my house or my aunt or whatever. Like... I don't want you near me. And he's like, uh, and she's like, yeah, you're fired. Like, go fuck off. And so he like runs away. He runs away, but he like kind of threatens her at before she does that. He's like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, you're going to regret this. You're going to rue the day, Charlie. You're going to rue the day, Carly Shay. You'll rue this day. You'll rue it. So then Lori like scurries off to Curly and she's like crying. She's like, I'm so scared. Judd was like being mad aggressive with me, very scary, he threatened me. I fired him, but now I'm afraid what he's gonna do because now he's nothing to lose, I fired him. And Curly's like, no baby, it's okay, like, we're gonna be fine. He consoles her. So then, Curly is like, I've always loved you, I can protect you, you don't need a farm hand. it's just you and your aunt in this big farm, you feel unsafe, I'll be there, like, I'll protect you, I wanna be with you forever. And he proposes to her and Lori's like, yes. And then they're like, oh my God, we're engaged. Off beyond. That's crazy. And so then, yeah, it's super cute. So then later, um, Ado Annie is saying bye to Ali Hakeem because Ali Hakeem is a peddler. He goes to like different states, even though once again, this isn't a state, it's a territory. Um, he goes around to like different places. So he's on to his next place and oh my God. And Ada Wanny's like, I'm gonna miss you. Like, I had a really nice time with you. And he's like, yeah, Will really likes you. Like, you should be with Will. And then, like, while Will's there, he's like, before I leave, though. And he, like, kisses her. And he's like, sorry. Like, that's how we say bye in Persia. So, Will and Ada Wanny are now affianced. Curly and Lori are now affianced. So many affiances. Three weeks later... Curly and Lori are having their wedding. Ah! Everyone's really excited. And the Ali Hakeem's there. And when Ada Wendy's like, homie, I thought you left. Apparently, Gertie, the annoying girl with the annoying laugh that was with Curly, she like met Ali Hakeem and then Ali Hakeem like hooked up with her. And then Gertie's dad did the same thing that Ada Wendy's dad did to him. But like, he has no way out of it. Now he's just gonna marry Gertie. Will, because Ali Hakeem kissed Ada Wendy, before he left, Will is like, this is only fair. And he kisses Gertie. And Ada Wendy's like, what the literal hell is going on? And almost like rocks Gertie shit. Huh? So then Curly and Lori get married. It's all really nice. Then they have this little like tradition where when a married couple and it's like their wedding night, they ring all like these bells and force them out of like their honeymoon thing or something like that. Something, they just pull a little prank. And so while they're getting pulled out, they're all outside and they're all like, ah, what a funny little prank that we're about to pull. And then Curly and Lori come out 
And then Judd comes. Judd is drunk. And Judd kisses Lori. And he's all like, fuck you, girly. Like, he's drunk, but he's like scary. Lori, Curly gets mad, like punches him. And then they start to fight. He has like a knife. Curly gets a knife. And they're like... And then Judd somehow or another falls onto his own knife and he dies. Because now they have to have all of like these trials and all of these things to see if Curly has to go to jail. Now, they want to have a fair trial, but everything's like really iffy. It's obviously self-defense, so... And she basically like bribes everyone to just plead him not guilty so that him and Lori can just start living their lives. The town doesn't and Curly is not guilty because it really, it was self-defense and everyone's happy. The end. Okay, so I just wanted to end this video with a little so in the revival of Oklahoma, my sister went to see it. I didn't get to see it, but she said that they do a really interesting thing where all the trial and the entire finale is done with Curly and Lori covered in Jed's blood and it raises the question that even though Jet is the bad guy should Curly and Lori have just gone off so scot-free um for this murder because even though it is self-defense Jet falls on his own blade it kind of feels like they just do it just to the bad guy is dead now and it just begs the question like oh if someone is poor or if someone doesn't have a lot of friends or if someone has bad qualities does their death not matter as long as the good people get like a good ending? It, it's like it's like very eerie because you want Lori, like you know Lori and Curly are good people and you want them to have a good life and to live happily ever after. But it's like very irking that it's at this cost and that you kind of like feel like icky that Judd died because it is kind of sad even though Judd was creepy. It's one of the first musicals, the first musical ever is Showboat, but people usually define the beginning of Golden Age musicals by Oklahoma. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Um, I do old musical, new musical, old musical, new musical, so while I will be having, because I, I like to do three regular uploads and then a mukbang, but... Um, I already know what I'm going to film for the next three uploads, so if you guys want to comment and say the newer musical that you want me to do for next mukbang, you can completely do that. To be a really good bootleg of Hugh Jackman as Curly, where Curly is played by Hugh Jackman. Also just wanted to add something I think is interesting. When you watch Greatest Showman, there's a part where the mean guys like who hate the circus light it on fire the main guy who yells at the people who work at the circus the circus acts the guy the main guy who yells at them is judd in that production of oklahoma so he is the bad guy well not the bad guy because like but he's one of like the bad guys in that scene of greatest showman and greatest showman has hugh jackman and he was also in it and I tried to look up all this stuff to see if, like, maybe they even talked about it, but they don't. But when me and my sister watched it, we were like, that's so funny. Because, mind you, this production of Oklahoma happened in the 90s in London. So I, I just thought it was funny that both of them worked together again on Greatest Showman. I hope you guys liked it. Comment a new show you want me to do. I love you guys very much. Uh... I'm feeling very fat, feeling a little rotund. This is a lot of food. Stay safe, stay happy. Just be bad bitches. Love you. Like jazz. Yeah.